Let's do problem number 25 on page 142. And uh, let's read the problem. It's right here. It says, uh, a block is given an initial velocity of 5 meters per second up a frictionless 20 degree incline. How far up the incline does the block slide before coming to rest? Okay, so um, so this is frictionless, right? This is before uh, we started doing friction. So let's do uh, given. So we have a 20 degree incline. So here's the horizontal. This is our incline, it's 20 degrees equals theta, our angle of incline. And uh, we've got some kind of, uh, let me focus that a little better. And so we've got some kind of little uh, block on here, but now it's frictionless. Now it's pretty hard to, the way I draw frictionless is I put wheels on it. And um, it's given an initial velocity of five meters per second. And uh, far, how far up the incline does a block slide before coming to rest? So you, you can tell, look, if I, if I shove this little cart going up, it's going to go, whoo, and that's, it's going to slow down, right? Gravity's going to slow it down. It's a component of gravity. And so it's eventually going to come to rest. And what we want to know is, uh, <clears throat> well, there's going to be some kind of delta x right here, some kind of displacement. And that's what we want to know. We want to know uh, how far up the incline does the block slide before coming to rest. There we go. So let's solve it. <coughs> now, <clears throat> when I'm given initial velocities, I've got an incline, I've got forces involved, but I can figure out, I'm just going to assume that I can figure out what the acceleration is. So what do I know? I know the initial velocity, final velocity, I want to find delta x, I can figure out uh, the acceleration, but I don't know time, I'm not trying to find time, so I'm going to use the kinematic equation that doesn't have time in it. The uh, fourth one, where it says v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. And I'm going to solve for delta x. v squared minus v naught squared over 2a. Now, I need to figure out what the acceleration is uh, and everything else I know. So when I have a situation where uh, I've got an object that has forces on it, uh, the way to figure out what the acceleration is is to apply the procedure. So now I'm going to use the procedure. So first thing I want to do is draw a free body diagram. Here's my little car. Gravity is pulling it down. Mg. And that's how I always write gravity from now on. M times G. M is the mass of the car. G is the acceleration of gravity. 9.8 meters per second squared, or you can think of it as the gravitational field strength. How strong is Earth's gravity? It pulls with 9.8 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. Okay, that's, that's a, another, that's a better way actually of thinking what's going on here. Then I've got a normal force. Okay, now the normal force by you know, definition is perpendicular to the plane. Normal means perpendicular, perpendicular to the plane here. And, <clears throat> and look, um, that's it. Uh, nobody's applying a force to this car. Uh, there's no rope or there's no tension, there's no engine. Uh, it said this plane is frictionless. So there's no frictional forces. This is it. Okay. So, I just completed step two. Now let's do step three of the procedure. Uh, establish our x and y axis and break up the forces into their x and y components. So uh, I'm going to make going up the incline positive x and perpendicular to the incline uh, positive y. Now the normal force is all in the y direction 
But look at gravity. Gravity is now at an incline. I didn't draw gravity very well. Did no, it's okay. All right. So let's break up gravity into its components. We've got this force that's in the y the component, and then we have this force that's parallel uh, or in the x direction. And this. If, 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 if this has been tilted up 20 degrees like this, then this has been tilted up 20 degrees right here. So there's my angle of incline right there. There's our 20 degrees. So this is the adjacent leg. So we would get that by multiplying the weight, mg, times the cosine of the angle of incline. Why cosine? Because it's the <coughs> adjacent leg. The right triangle tells you whether it's cosine or sine. Not whether it's X or Y. That's arbitrary. But the right triangle tells you when to use sine and cosine or tangent or any other, other trig functions. Since theta is up in here, this is a component of the weight that is adjacent to that angle. So it's the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which is mg times cosine theta. And this is mg this component right here, mg sine theta. Okay, so now I've done step one, given, find, and solve of the picture. Uh, step two, free body diagram. Step three, x and y axis divided up into their components. Step four, use Newton's second law. Let's sum the forces to find the acceleration. Right now in the y direction, I can see, that, oh, the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine theta. Don't need that yet. That's when we get to friction that we'll need that. Right now, I just want to know what the acceleration is in the x direction. So sum of the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. And so here's the only force in the x direction is the component of the weight mg sine theta but the way I drew this notice that this is in the negative x direction so I'll put a negative out there equals ma and look they didn't give us the mass of that car did they don't need to it cancels out if the mass of the car the object is not given that probably means it's going to cancel out later on okay and so now the acceleration, we can now solve for the acceleration, equals, um, <clears throat> well, negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 20 degrees. Could somebody do that for me who has a calculator? Negative 3.35 meters per second squared. Now the negative just means it's in the negative x direction and that's what I'm sticking with here. So I'm gonna keep that negative. So delta x is equal to the final velocity squared, well that's just zero, minus the initial velocity squared, oops, uh, divided by twice the acceleration. And notice the negative here will cancel the negative there. We're going to get a positive delta x, and it will. Even though the acceleration is negative, it's going to slow to a stop, and we're going to have a positive displacement. So that's 25 divided by, uh, so what is it, 3 point 3 something? 7. Huh? 3.73. 3.73? Is that right? Okay. There's my answer. There's delta x. Okay, this is a very nice little problem because it has all the parts in it that you're going to see in, the, in these kind of problems. You're still going to have to use the kinematic equations and so on that we learned in chapter 3 and 4. Uh, but now we have to use the procedure, uh, Newton's second law and so on, free body diagrams and all that, to figure out what the acceleration is to use with those um, kinematic equations. Yes? Why did you put the uh, delta x uh, parallel with the hypotenuse of the incline? So why did I, I put the delta x parallel to the hypotenuse? Well, 
I knew, okay, I knew ahead of time that I was dealing with an inclined plane problem, and I knew uh, that I was going to tilt my x, y axis to match that incline. So I just went ahead and made it delta x. So I, I, I um, and remember, your x, y axis can always match the problem that you're doing, all right? You have control over how you want to place your x and y, um, your x and y axis system. So do it in a way that makes it easier to solve the problem. And Well, I read uh, the problem uh, says how far up the incline does the block slide before coming to rest. Now, I oh, I think I see what you're saying. You're 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 thinking of like what was the change in height here? Were you thinking of that? No, the change in horizontal. Oh, okay. Well, you could easily do that now, but uh, in this problem, what they really intended you to do is to figure out what the displacement up the incline was. Yes. So how does this x, y axis match with this picture over here? Yeah. Well, what I want is I want x to be parallel to the incline, and I want y to be perpendicular to the incline. Okay. And that's because that's what makes it easier to solve. Good questions. Anything else? Das ist alles.